welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Vicki Lynn. I am so happy that you've clicked on my video and you're here. You must have loved, you must love meal preps because that's what we're doing today. And I'm excited. We're doing a bunch of new recipes and we're gonna have some flavor. We're gonna have some stuff going on. We are making a zucchini bread. Yep, and it's gonna be oil free. I know. We're going to make like an African um, stew. We are going to do falafels. I'm trying to think of all the ways I can use um, my new food processor. So this is my new fr processor. It is gorgeous, isn't she gorgeous? And my daughter's actually got it for me for Mother's Day. And I'm excited to use it and see what we can do with it because my old food processor, and if you watch all my old videos, you know it, it struggled. It str was on the struggle bus and I'm excited to make I actually stopped making like energy balls or anything that I need to like break down dates because it just took so long. So I am super excited. I hope you are too. Um, again, I'll, I'll link this one down below, but um, a, a good food processor is I think along with your Instant Pot, your Vitamix and an air fryer. I think those are the only four things I would ever need. So we are going to put on our apron and we're going to start. Oh, that was my reminder. Don't forget to set your preset your oven to a 350. So what we're going to do is I already have potatoes in the Instant Pot like I always do. So if this is your first time here, hi, I am your potato queen. <laughs> but I always have potatoes, they're always cooked. I don't need to show you that. You guys know how to cook potatoes either on the stove or in your Instant Pot or whatever. So I usually do two different types of potatoes, russets that I like to, to pre-cook so I can chop them up and make fries or hash browns or discs, whatever, and then throw them in the air fryer and crisp them up really good. Love that. And then I use the Yukon Golds so I can make my cheese sauce. Again, I'll link that one too because that's kind of like, you know, that's a standard in any plant-based vegan diet is making your own kind of cheese sauce. And I've made it a, again a thousand times. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button and scooch on over, hit that bell icon so you know every time one of my videos goes up because I always have new and exciting recipes. And I also, I also do book reviews, I do grocery hauls, all that fun stuff. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do the zucchini bread because that needs to cook for a while. And while the oven's already on, which we have it at set at 350, I'm going to cook some sweet potatoes because I might need to make like some sweet potato pudding or brownies or something later on. Of course, all oil free. I have recipes down below. And I also have a very long playlist of meal preps. I have over 300 videos on this channel, some of them from when I was way back, and in fact, the falafel recipe was like the second one I ever filmed three years ago. But I make it all the time. But now that I have my new food processor, I just really can't wait to get going. So, sweet potatoes in the oven. They're gonna cook alongside with the zucchini bread. So now, for the zucchini bread, we do need to grate up a zucchini. Go figure. I just wanted to kind of show you. So this food processor is awesome because if you're just blending, like, you, you know, if you're, you're chopping something up with your chopping blade, you would just use this so it's easier to clean one. And then if you're actually slicing and dicing, you would use this one that has like the little mouth. Again, super simple. So today we are going to be shredding and this one comes with a shredding blade a thick slicer and then a thin slicer. So this one's two mils and that one's four mils. Again, and this isn't sponsored, but it's um, amazing. Like it's so strong and so, just because it's not flimsy, they're not flimsy blades and the stem that comes with it works with all three. All right, so we're going to shred our zucchini. So if you want to take the stem off, it just, and it fits in, let me see if I can show you, like this, hang on, and twist and then locks. So it's perfect. So we're gonna put that in, there we go. We are going, now it is, I have only started to play with this, so I, you have to obviously have everything lined up correctly. There we go. And you wanna lock it in place. So 
I'm going to start with the zucchini because that's what we need. This recipe I'm actually taking from Forks Over Knives. It's supposed to have avocados in it, but my avocados aren't ripe yet, so I'm going to replace that with a banana. I know. I'm just calling it on that one. Okay. All right, so we're just going to get our pusher, and we're going to turn it on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's very quiet. So this recipe didn't actually say bring out all the water, but I'm going to anyway, just a little bit, because zucchini is obviously very wet, and we don't want our cake to, or banana bread. We don't, we don't want our zucchini cake um, to be super wet. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit out. I'm just using a tea towel. And actually there's hardly anything, so that's not so bad. There we go. You just kind of want to get the excess. We're going to put this together and again, we're preheating our oven to 350. I have a loaf pan that I put in with parchment paper so I don't need to spray it or use oil. We're gonna put that aside. So we're going to do plant-based milk. Now this recipe called for an avocado. And again, my avocados aren't ripe yet. So I'm actually going to use a banana. And don't forget to save your banana peels and check out my recipe for banana, banana bacon. So if you had an avocado, you'd be adding that. I'll put it in the recipe because the avocado will be where you're gonna get your fat from, but it's a healthy fat. So I'm just gonna mash a banana. And again, if you don't have an avocado, you can use applesauce, whatever you want. And I'm sure you could even use pumpkin in this. Make like a pumpkin zucchini bread. Okay, we're gonna add in our flaxseed. Gonna give that a little stir. That's gonna be our egg replacer. Um, this recipe actually called for half a cup of dry sweetener. I'm using just a quarter of a cup. I don't like my cakes to be too sweet and with the banana, I'm sure that a quarter of a cup would be fine and I'm using coconut sugar. I would use a dry sweetener because I think um, a wet sweetener like maple syrup or agave would change the quantities. We are just going to blend the those ingredients first. We're gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla, a teaspoon of lemon zest. So I always zest my lemons when I make my lemon drink, or anytime I'm using lemon. I always do take the zest off first, and then I use the juice, because you're getting double duty out of them. So we're adding that, and then we're gonna start adding in our dry ingredients. Add in our baking soda, baking powder, some salt, and some spices. And again, guys, the recipe will be down below. No worries and then the flour. Now this recipe called for sp spelt flour and I didn't have any, so I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. You could use a whole wheat or a gluten-free. I'm going to chop up some nuts. And these are walnuts, great for your brain. That's why they look like brains. So we're gonna give this a stir in. Now we're gonna add in our zucchini, goes. Make sure we get it all. And our walnuts. Now you could add raisins if you want, but my husband's not a raisin fan. Take our prepared pan, put our zucchini bread in there. Now we're gonna put this in the oven for 60 to 70 minutes. So our next recipe, we're back still with the food processor and we're gonna make falafels. So this is like, I, as I said before, probably the second video I ever made. It's very cringy, don't watch it. <laughs> Um, but it's a great recipe. So we're going to um, start with half an onion and I have this left over in my fridge so I'm going to throw that in and let the system chop. This time we're just gonna use the standard lid, not the, so that you can just chop. So I'm just going to use the pulse now just to chop up that onion before I add the rest in. Oh my goodness. I really like this. It's super quiet, which is exactly what I like. Now we're going to add in, so we need about half a cup of chopped cilantro, which I'm gonna throw in there and see how well this chops for me. And the same thing with parsley. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna break it down a little bit before I put in the chickpeas. Okay. Oh, so you no wonder I want it one so badly. This is, this makes this recipe go by so quickly so easy 
And now we're gonna add in our chickpeas. You would need one can of chickpeas for this recipe or two cups of chickpeas if you make your own from dry, which is what I always do. You wanna take your spices, the recipe will build down below, guys. You wanna take your spices and you wanna make sure you toast them because that blooms the flavor and it makes a huge difference. There's a big difference when you're putting like raw spices in to like toasted spices. Again, if you could smell, it's amazing in here right now. So we're just gonna put that in. Because it's asking for the juice of a lemon, I'm actually going to zest my lemon first. That way, again, I always keep my lemon zest because we do love um, lemon blueberry overnight oats. And honestly, lemon zest adds great flavor to almost anything that you're making or having. Got our lemon zest, we're gonna put that aside. Just gonna juice in a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Probably like a third of a lemon. Depends Again, it all depends when you're using lemons and limes, how juicy they are. So again, you can use the lemon juice in the bottle if you want, that's totally up to you. We're adding in now some garlic. You could use fresh garlic. I am just going to use the stuff in the jar and it just depends on kind of what mood I'm in, what's going on. A little sprinkle of cayenne pepper and it's just to give it a, a really nice floral under note. Add some salt. If you're SOS, don't add salt. There's enough flavor in here that I don't think you really have to be, sorry about my glasses guys, but I can't see without them to be honest. Um, so there's a lot, you know, going on with the flavors and you have the fresh herb. So if you're not into it, I just find it as just a little mm, something. Last but not least, we're going to add in some chickpea flour. Sorry, first we're gonna blend this. So once you blend it, you just want to make sure it's gonna stick between your fingers, which this one is doing very well. And then we're gonna add in half a tablespoon of baking powder. And the chickpea flour. going to process that that is perfect and you can taste it at this point check the seasonings mmm delicious put this into a bowl cover it and throw it into the fridge for about an hour because you want all those spices and everything to meld together. So we're going to make the North African um, chickpea and vegetable stew and for that we need to make a chamula or chamola sauce. Guys, somebody correct me down below, not exactly sure. I've heard it before. Sometimes I have an issue with pronunciation. Um, so we're going to throw that together. It does say to use a blender and I could put it in my Vitamix to make it really smooth, I guess, but I am going to try the food processor. If it doesn't smooth it enough, I'll just throw it in the Vitamix, but I just want to see what it can do. So we're starting with one tomato chopped, about a cup or so of coriander. And in this recipe, definitely use the, the stems. There's more flavor in the stems. You need the zest of one lemon, and I just zested one lemon, so we're all set there. We need some garlic, and lots of it. It calls for six cloves of garlic. We need the juice of a whole lemon. You could use bottle juice if you wanted to. I happen, this happens to be my last one. So it calls for one lemon juice, so we're going to add that. And then we're gonna blend it. If it needs a little more liquid, we can always add a little bit of the bottled lemon juice. And then we're gonna add in all of our spices. And that happens to be like coriander and cumin and sweet paprika. This recipe actually calls for um, olives, but I'm allergic to olives, so we're not having olives. And I think that's it. Now we're gonna blend this. I think it's doing the trick. Oh, that smells so good. Oh my God, that's like a flavor bomb of flavor. I think that looks delicious. Can't wait to use that. I'm just gonna slice them by hand. Just need to slice them as half moons. 
And because zucchinis cook down, I'm going to make them just a little bit wider. The recipe also calls for mushrooms, which I've already washed and sliced. So we need um, a bell pepper. You could use red. I'm actually going to use yellow for a change. And again, guys, you know, you take a recipe and you make it your own. So sorry about that. That's a little loud. You make it your own. You make it super simple. You can adjust on recipes. There are suggestions. Yes, with baking, you need exact measurements. Just going to cut these into strips. And then we need um, medium yellow onion. Again, whatever onion you have, cooking onions, sweet onions. Didn't have it, you could use granulated onion, dried onion, onion powder. Make it a little bit different, but that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna put that in my scrap bin. So if you've been here around, ah, if you've been around here for a while, you know I keep all my scraps and I use it to make my own vegetable stock. I cut these into like half moons. You could leave them whole if you wanted to, but I just think it's easier. We have the rest of our ingredients here, so we're gonna get to the stove and start cooking. So because we cook with water instead of oil, which is very good for your body, um, always make sure you have, I always have a, like a larger glass of purified water uh, right beside my stove so I can just throw it in. Because what you have to do is you're gonna saute stuff, but you don't want it to dry or burn, okay? So we're gonna put in the onions and the bell pepper and the mushrooms. We're gonna cook this down for about eight minutes. Now we're going to add in our zucchini and our chickpeas. We're gonna let this cook for about five, five to 10 minutes. So now that's cooked with the chickpeas and the zucchini for about 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna add in the tremola, tremola. And then blend that in. And then we're gonna let this cook for about another five minutes. And let all those flavors and spices meld together. So I'm going to try some of this stew. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything. So let me try this stew. Again, I think with the tremula, it's going to be delicious. Mm. Really great flavors. Super fresh. Good acidity. Really good. Give this one a try. So our falafel mixture has been chilling for an hour, and now we're just going to make them into falafel balls, or whatever shape you want. I'm going to take a baking sheet and a silk pot or parchment paper. I'm gonna put them on there and throw them, or put them in the freezer that way, and let them freeze till they're hard. And then you can just throw them into a reusable Ziploc bag or anything. Um, and then when you want falafels, just take them out, put them in your air fryer for about seven to eight minutes, and in your oven a little bit longer. Again, till they're brown and golden and delicious. So, and don't forget, I have a great recipe for a vegan tzatziki down there and a great hummus. So if you're looking for those recipes, Look down below. I will link them for you. So they'll be here or there. Falafel. So I'm just gonna use um, a scoop. And you don't even have to. You can just use your, you can eyeball it, do whatever you want. Just wanna roll them into nice little balls. That's the way I like them. And while this was while this was chilling in the fridge, we made our North African chickpea and veggie stew, which was delicious. So I usually double this recipe because it's so delicious. 
makes about 16 to 18 balls. Depends on how big your scoop is, how big you want them. So it made 18 balls. So we're just gonna throw this in the freezer and they'll be good to go in a couple of hours and then we can put them in a Ziploc bag and keep them. So that meal prep is done. We are all set for this week. We have set ourselves up for success. We have a great bunch of recipes. We have the falafels. We have the African, North African chickpea and vegetable stew. That's a very long, I, I like just saying North African stew, but anyway, that's a very good. And that is absolutely the dishes. That is so super simple and easy to make. And what else did we make? Oh, we made the zucchini bread. The zucchini bread recipe is actually from Forks Over Knives. I was doing recipe testing and stuff and I just threw it into um, my meal prep. And that actually turned out really good. And again, oil-free and absolutely delicious. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget, hit that subscribe, give it a couple of thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And we're gonna see you in the next video.